How are college parties? Is kicking your roommates out for sex, vice versa, a thing? How do you make friends? Definitely take my advice with a fucking grain of salt. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, my name's Erica, and I just turned 19. I also just finished my first year of college, so I decided to do a little Q&A and answering some of your guys' question about college in general, basically. I have four different types of categories in my notes. I have college, education, slash like organization tips and advice. I have friendship advice and tips and relationships. And I have TMI questions, but I kind of want to save that for another video, like girl talk type of video. So comment down below if you guys want that type of video. I decided to make this a little interesting. I am going to dye my hair black while answering these questions. My hair right now looks black, but it's actually like brown in the sun. I just want it like pitch black. You know, you know what I mean? Wait. Okay, this is conditioner and I've got these two bottles. I'm also doing this in my room, so hopefully I don't like stain anything. I, it looks like I'm in like a hospital room. My room is actually like so scary sometimes. All right, the first step is to put on coloring gloves. I got these little gloves. I feel like every Asian parents own these. Okay, 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 okay. Do I put the whole thing in here? Okay. So I feel like I have to like introduce myself just in case people just don't really know that much about me. I'm 19, I went to college in New York City, Fordham University. So the first category I'm going to dive into is college education slash organization and just like stuff like that. How do you balance relationships in college. I am still working on this problem. In college, you just have like so much going on and it's just like a new era in your life where you have to start being independent and like actually manage your time well. Cause in high school, you just have like a strict eight hours of school and then you come back, do sports, or you like do your homework and then hang out with your friends. Like it's kind of like set for you. But in college, there's like time blocks where it's like, okay, you have a class at 8 a.m. But then you have like a four hour time to do something. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? So that's where you have to figure it out, you know? My biggest problem in college with managing relationships was making sure I have enough time to actually focus on schoolwork. Because if you didn't know, I lived in a suite and the suite had eight girls. So I was constantly surrounded by people and that really really gets in the way of your education which i learned the hard way so my biggest lesson that i learned was literally you just need to like fucking wake up like just think about it bro you're in college you need to, you need to get your shit together there was a lot of times where like my roommates would be sitting around and talking and having a nice conversation like i was like okay let me just stay for 30 minutes and that 30 minutes turns into two hours and you need to know that i literally needed to like force myself to get up and like leave the dorm because i realized that if i don't do that then i'm gonna waste my time and socialize instead also another big thing i told myself is that at the end of the day you're not gonna really miss out on much you could do all the same thing after you're done with work i hope that answered the question but yeah it's a lot harder than you think in college or at least like in my situation where you live in like a suite or something because you just kind of want to socialize all the time especially in freshman year socializing is like so important okay here we go i'm also doing this alone so this might turn out blotchy af you really do need to just fucking realize like you need to get my sh you need to get your shit together because it's easy to get like lost in like just partying socializing and stuff like that but you really do need to wake the fuck up all right if you need to get get a little to-do list oh, me and my friends oftentimes we would literally verbalize to each other like okay like let's get our shit together and like we would get our shit together together so it does help like ha doing that with your friends just just have fun in college, especially your first year, but also learn to know when to like pause and actually focus on the shit you need to start focusing on. Is it better to dorm or get an apartment? In my opinion, 
I think dorming your first year is honestly the best idea because you get like better opportunities to socialize. You literally live in like a whole big ass building just filled with your friends or filled with like people you could be friends with, you know? If you're commuting, it's harder because you're separated from that. Obviously, it is a privilege to like dorm. Like if you have an opportunity to um, save money and get an apartment or like commute from your house, obviously do that because you're, you're fucking saving money. But if you have the privilege and if you have like scholarships, obviously, which was in my case, I would definitely dorm. I totally recommend it. I made so many amazing friends just by dorming and friends that are not even in my dorm, friends from like the third floor, fifth floor, sixth floor. One of my close friends, Manu, like he would just barge into the dorm and be like, hey, like it's so fun. Are there any similarities and differences in high school? What I realized is like, there still will be like those type of people in college who are like social climbers or like clout chasers or those annoying fucking people. They're always gonna be there. There are a lot of things that are different. Number one, at least, in my college, there's not really a lot of clicky groups. I feel like in high school, it was like really weird to like go out of your circle and hang out with someone else that's in another group. I feel like a lot of people are like, what the fuck, do you see that she hung out with her? Like they're in different friend groups. Like what are they doing? Like, are they not friends anymore? I think that's like a big thing in high school. At least it wasn't mine. But once I got to college, I realized that nobody really gives a fuck who you're friends with. I could hang out with my friend group and also hang out with someone that's in another friend group. And it's not like a clicky thing. Another thing is that there's so much more freedom in college. Like, I feel like that's just like an obvious thing. But I feel like you don't realize how much freedom you have. You can do like fucking anything, especially if you have like strict Asian parents. You're gonna have the time of your life. What the fuck? I can't even see shit and I can't even feel. There is no limitation. There's no one that's gonna tell you, you need to come home at this time. Like you're gonna get in trouble if you're all raw. You can invite whoever you want, whenever you want. You can also like skip classes or find an excuse to miss classes and your parents like won't know really, which I do not recommend doing. I definitely did do that a lot my first semester of college, but you soon to realize it's really not that worth it because you miss out on stuff and then you're fucked for your midterms and finals. The last thing I've learned that's a lot different from high school and college is that you get to learn how to be so much more independent. Like there's no mommy and daddy taking you to the grocery store and you need to do that by yourself. Also, if you go to a school in New York City, like you will realize you will like step into a whole different dimension with like diversity. My high school was very like white, not a lot of like black people or Actually, there was a lot of Asian people, I will say. Not a lot of like representation in the black community in my high school. If you go to New York City, you will see like everyone. And honestly, it's like so refreshing. And I just feel like I could take like a deep fucking breath of like fucking air. Like oh, fucking Jesus. Like not even like race wise, but aesthetic wise. If you want a furry, there'll be a furry. If you want a fucking fairy, there there will be a fairy. There, there will be druggies. There will be every type of type of different type of people there. Love that for New York. My hair's low key burning. Burning zone, 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 zone. Definitely take my advice with a fucking grain of salt. Like how are college parties? That's an excellent question, Stephanie. Really depends. Most times a lot of kids go out to like bars or clubs or like, you know, party in their dorms. There's not a lot of like sorority parties except for like NYU, I guess. NYU has frats parties and stuff, but I've been to like a few and it's not that fun. Especially because it's in New York and like a lot of the parties are in like tight ass apartments. So it just gets like really crowded and not that fun. A lot of the times it's the environment and how you make the party. My biggest advice, especially for the people who are taken is to just enjoy yourself. A lot of the times I feel like parties are for hookups or like finding a partner and like, you know, for the plot, but it doesn't have to be that way. And that's how I was my whole fucking year of college. And honestly, I don't regret it. It's so much fun. I did not have to worry about looking good for a guy. I didn't have to try so hard because who am I trying to impress? So I just danced and like sang my ass off with my friends. And it's honestly like that way, it's like so much fun like partying like that. So moral of the story for college parties, don't really like, 
care about the people around you or like looking good for guys because I promise you focusing on having fun with your friends makes the party a lot more fun because honestly I feel like I had more fun than the rest of my roommates with clubs and like parties because I just like didn't have to worry about finding someone or like trying to impress anyone but also in college please stay safe with partying and stuff. I would definitely know your limits with everything if you know what I'm talking about. Know your limits and always look around your surroundings with your friends and stuff because it's not gonna it's not gonna be too pretty every every time you go out with your friends. Alright I'm almost done. I'm going to just wrap my hair around and finish cleaning it up. I have no clue if I dyed my hair fully well, but I am covered in fucking hair dye. Literally everywhere on my body. The next two questions are about roommates. I would say it's very, very important to set boundaries and rules with your roommates in the beginning. Also in the beginning, set up roommate meetings. So what my roommates and I did in the first semester, we would have like roommate meetings every like two weeks if a problem came up we would go around the circle and say like what we should do and also a positive thing like oh i really appreciated how everyone put their dishes in the sink and it wasn't like a huge beef thing it's just like a hey like next time can everyone do their dishes it's not like a oh bethany you didn't throw out the trash last tuesday and it stunk up the whole room and because of you blah, blah, blah. it doesn't have to be that way but if you and your roommates are like fucking mature it won't be a whole beef thing and that's how my situation was for most of the time and yeah if you have a crazy roommate good luck charlie it's not my problem that's yours how is sharing rooms with people in college oh my god before going into college i was so fucking scared of this like I hate like sharing rooms with people. I hate when people like look at me while I sleep. Like I was scared like do you even have like the space to fart? Like what happens if you accidentally fart? Let me tell you and let me be the person to reassure you you're fine. I lived with eight girls and sharing a room and like farting and sharing a bathroom was never a problem for me. The only thing I will say is that you barely have any personal space. You rarely find a time where you are alone in a room like to cry or like talk with someone on the phone. There were also times where I would get shy like shitting or having like a massive diarrhea in the bathroom. Um, my biggest advice is not to give a shit. <laughs> no pun intended. Everyone has the same lady parts. Everyone fucking takes shits. Like everyone has massive, disgusting, smelly ass, stinky ass coochie ass diarrheas so don't get shy it honestly makes it more easier and you get more comfortable if you just like fucking announce it to your roommates for example when i took fat shits i would literally walk out of the bathroom and be like oh by the way i just took a fat shit like it like makes things more awkward if you just like kind of like like <laughs> Oh no, that, that 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 wasn't me. Just fucking announce it. You guys are living with each, with each other for a year, so you might as well just announce when you take a fat doo doo. But just because you're comfortable doesn't mean you should not take care of yourself. Okay? Wipe the toilet seats. Make sure you flush. Clean the sink a little here and there. Um, you know, take the hair off the wall in your shower, you know, take care of yourself so you don't piss off your roommates. Last question for this category, is it actually better than high school? Yes. If you're worried about making friends, blah, 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 which was my main concern, don't worry, you will make friends. We are on to the next category, which is friends. I got so, 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 so many questions, like of the same questions on this category. The number one question was, how do you make friends? That was like the, like, the only question in this category, honestly. Take my advice with a grain of salt, but I will give you tips and advice on how I make friends. It's easy to talk to people, but getting close with them is another story. It's like trying to get close with like a classroom friend. Going into college, I have found ways to become closer to people. So here's my little life hacks. First of all, in college, everyone is trying to make friends. No one comes into college with a fucking friend group. Be fucking nice to everyone, approach everyone, and like you never know like who your friend, best friend will be. So especially orientation day, all of that, just be friends with everyone, you know? One thing I've learned on how to make friends is literally be yourself. I know that's like the most basic cliche shit 
ever but actually just be yourself because that's usually how other people become comfortable with you and also reach out to them especially like the first few months of college it's really important to reach out to people because everyone is coming from different places like everyone is probably very lonely so reaching out to people really really helps for example it never hurts to just text someone you just met and you kind of had like a good vibe you know you know those people when you meet someone and you're like mm, she and i are kind of on the, like the same wavelength don't be shy and text them and be like oh bro like i just bought like this cookie ma mix like do you want to make it at the door um or even just reach out to them and ask them how they're doing sometimes i'll text my roommates or my friends and be like oh my god i just heard that you just failed your test like are you okay you know on the topic of making friends what are some good icebreakers to make friends my number one advice is to be fucking weird just be yourself and be fucking weird i'm not talking about weird as in like pick your nose and like eat it i mean like just be relatable everyone goes through the same shit so the more relatable you are the more like other people are comfortable around you i think the main reason my roommates and i became so close is because we're just all fucking weird literally the first week of when we met we started talking about like armpit hair pubic hair sexual things just personal weird things that we both can relate on it made it like number one comfortable living with each other because we all like kind of were like uh, 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 relate and number two it just like grows a little bond or at least that's how i feel when my friends are like that and when they announce like oops i just farted i just feel so reassured and like i feel like i don't have to be like this pretty perfect person where i'm just like nah. i don't know i don't know if that makes sense but yeah red flags in friends very important i feel like not a lot of people talk about this but i will be your big sister to talk about this so my main red flags that i could think of right now are as follows number one if you feel like shit around them and your confidence is getting low and you just feel drained your social battery is running out when you're around them you gotta fucking run okay just go run just just run be a runner, be a track star, okay? Number two, if all they talk about is boys and themselves, go start trotting away, you know? Go taking a light jog because no friend should just talk about themselves. That number one gets fucking draining. I hate when people only talk about boys or like stuff like that. Like, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the state of the economic in the world, okay? I don't care who you hooked up with last time. Um, obviously those talks are interesting, but if your friend is only talking about themselves and only talking about like the boys they're interested in recently, it gets boring. Okay, they just want to talk to a wall at this point. So go go start jogging. Number three, if you notice that your friends are coming to you only for their benefit, bite. It's time for you to become the fucking flash. Not only does it feel like shit, but also it's like, that's not a real friend, sweetie. If your friend is only coming to you for like homework answers or to just borrow your clothes or talk to you to be friends with someone else, that's not a real friend. Go run. Like, what are you doing? Are you a doormat? No, you're not. Okay, go stand up and start running. But those are my main red flags. I got questions asking if it's normal to drop friends going into college. There's different stories to each friendships, but I will say, I do understand some stories because number one, I believe that friends outgrow each other and you guys are not the same person as you were in high school. Once you're in college, you learn things, you grow. So you guys might just not be like the same person or like the same people you were in high school and you guys might not connect as much as you did, you know? But I will say it is pretty, pretty fucked up if your friend fucking ditches you for like po more popular friends or like something like that. I don't know. Oh, this is another roommate question. Um, that's a little, a little not rated PG-13, but it is a very common thing that I want to talk about. Is kicking your roommates out for sex, vice versa, a thing? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. As sad as it sounds, it's a thing. Let's be honest, everyone has their wants and needs and there are times when you and your roommates are sharing a bedroom and you bring a guy over and you know, you want the room to yourself. It's very common. My recommendation is to set boundaries because I did have a huge fight with my roommate over, over this guy situation, but don't worry, I love you. We solved it all out. If you're my roommate, I love you, no bad blood, but I wanted to talk about it. Number one, make sure you talk about it with your roommates 
make sure you tell them directly. But number two, remember those rules will be broken one day, okay? One day those rules will be broken and you will be sad. You will be frustrated. You will be fucking pissed off. But at the end of the day, just talk to your roommate, okay? For example, one of my roommates had a boyfriend and he slept over a lot and, you know, asked for the room a lot, which I did not have a problem with at the time. But it got to the point where I was like staying up in the living room at 3 a.m. while my roommate and her boyfriend was there. And I was like, all right, this is getting out of hand. So the next day I walked up to my roommate and her boyfriend, really chill, really calm. I didn't want to make it a big beef thing. So I just went like, hey, like next time, can you just text me when you guys are gonna be here next time? Cause I just wanna do my skincare. Like, and they were like, oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. Like, I'll let you know, I'm sorry about last time. And I was like, okay, chill. And whenever I needed the room with my boyfriend, I would tell them like a day in advance or at least like an hour in advance. So yeah. Okay, last topic, relationships. I feel like relationships and like the TMI, like sexual sexual questions, I wanna do another video on, but I do have two questions in the relationship subject. I also need to wash my hair out soon. So let me go through them quickly. The first question is how do you do long distance? I fucking love this question because I am currently in a long distance relationship with my boyfriend. We go to different schools and it's really hard. It does get really hard because Oh my god, I'm gonna take a shit right now. Ugh. Oh my god, oh my god. Okay. Oh my god, my stomach, I need a shit. Long distance does get hard, especially in college, because your roommates and your friends will be getting guys and like having boyfriends right in front of you, and you're like, oh my god, I just want to cuddle with my boyfriend. There will be times like that. My best advice is literally keep yourself busy. I was always surrounded my, by my girlfriends, so I was always busy, so I barely thought about like texting my boyfriend or like FaceTiming him, which is really good because my boyfriend was always like busy. That's my best favorite advice, and my Second best favorite advice is communication. When you feel uncomfortable, when you feel like you're unsatisfied, let your partner know because communication is key. Your partner cannot read your mind over the fucking phone. So just tell him, her, they, she, he, it, okay? And personally, I believe quality FaceTime calls matter more than the quantity of FaceTime calls. So every time you guys are FaceTiming, try to have a good quality time. It doesn't matter how much you FaceTime them. If it's not quality time you guys are having together, it's not that fun. Long distance is not that hard if you make it hard. All right, my timer is going off. I'm going to wash my hair and we'll see the results. What up squad? What up gang? What up bitches? What up everyone? This is the final hair. It's definitely Looking a lot more black. Ooh, I definitely look like a bad bitch. This video is probably long enough. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys got some good advice and tips. And let me know if you want me to answer more questions because I could go on and on and on about my freshman year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out losers.